eight. <laughs> now, if you got some weird sense of satisfaction that you got this right, you know what you were probably thinking? Oh, I really have been struggling with 11s in my personal life and now I get it. Now, it turns out, when do people like math? When do people like math? When they get it, when they're good at it. So I'm gonna make kids good in math. You know how? I'm gonna trick them, okay? Can you flip over to the computer? I am going to trick them into doing hundreds and thousands of math problems in their head and liking it. I started out as an author. My kid was having separation anxiety. Okay, I was getting a divorce, my kid's first grade, having se separation anxiety. I ended up being a parent volunteer in her room every single day from 8.30 to 11 in first grade. So what am I doing the whole time? I'm like ADD, I'm going crazy, okay? I'm watching kids do stuff, I'm watching them count, counting everything in math class. You know what I do? I write a bunch of books, okay? So I started writing books. For example, my first book was The Grapes of Math. I want to trick kids into being smarter. Okay, if I said to a kid, okay, quick, how many fish? You know what most kids will start doing? What do they do? They start counting. Quick, how many fish? Okay, well, here's the poem. Of all the creatures in the sea, a fish is smart as smart can be. While others swim and play it cool, a fish is happy in a school. How many fish are in this class? Answer quick and you will pass. Here's a hint, a little clue, when counting fish just look askew. Well, let's look askew. Ready? C kid clicks the hint button. Do you look at that problem completely differently now? Okay, it's all about seeing the right groups. Now you're thinking, oh, four times four is 16. Okay, if I said to you, okay, let's look at dice. Okay, and I show you some dice. And I say, quick, how many dots do you see? Fast as you can, go. You know what most people are doing? Six and six is 12. 12 and 12 is 24. Ready, watch this. I click the hint button. Do you see groups of 10? Oh, it's 40. That's like a two second problem. Are most kids thinking in the right groups? Absolutely not, okay? So, one more problem, okay? See if, once you show a kid a strategy, can they learn the next time they see a similar problem? So again, I say, quick, how many squares on that kite? Okay, don't let little things distract you. Okay, let's hit the hint. Do you look at that completely differently? I hope so. Now, so I wrote a series of books published by Scholastic, and it was to teach kids to be smarter, clever, use poems and pictures to teach strategies. But my best thing I ever done is called Kakuma. Okay, I invented a puzzle. Turns out I started a company last year. We have offices now in one year in every city in the world. Is that amazing? We work out of Starbucks, okay? <laughs> we don't have an office, we work out of Starbucks. Now, watch what we do. I can trick a kid into doing hundreds of math problems in their head. Let's play Kakuma. Five numbers, easy numbers. Ready, I click on five. In every group of numbers, one number is the sum of two others. So if you look at this group up here, which number is the sum of two others? Notice six plus four is 10. So the answer would be what? 10, so I click on it, that's the answer. Let's look over here. Which number is the sum of two others? 13, nine plus four is 13. I click on 13, let's go down here, what's the answer? Nine and six is 15. I click over here, next one. Three plus one is four. Last one. Six plus three is nine. Now, those five answers just made another puzzle. You're supposed to go, that's really cool. That's really cool. What's the final answer? Nine plus four is 13. Now, it turns out that was a very easy problem. You know why? There were only five numbers in each group. 
What happens if I go up to six numbers? Is it going to be harder? Yeah. What if I go up to seven numbers? Or eight numbers? Or finally, nine numbers? Now, when you look at nine numbers, let's do one together. This square up here, raise your hand when you have the answer. One number is the sum of two others. Okay, it turns out eight plus four is 12. Now, don't say it out loud, just raise your hand when you have the right answer. This puzzle over here, what's the answer? Don't say it. Now, here's my point. The people that don't have the answers yet, do you find you're doing a lot of addition problems? Are you going around checking all the problems? I've probably just tricked you into doing six or eight addition problems in your head. And you may not get the answer. And then all of a sudden, you know what you're going to realize? Eight plus six is 14. So a lot of times you're going to get stuck. So let's finish this puzzle. Raise your hand when you have this one. Now, I don't want you to feel dumb if you can't get it, but you know what I want you to be thinking to yourself? When was the last time I did a lot of addition in my head? And if a kid did these puzzles, would they end up doing hundreds of problems in their head? Yes, okay? In this one, what's the answer? Eight plus 13 is 21. Let's keep going. This one, 10 plus nine is 19. Next one. 13 plus 9 is 22. Next one, 9 plus 7 is 16. Next one, 5 plus 13 is 18. Next one, 7 plus 3 is 10. Last one, 8 plus 5 is 13. It makes one more puzzle. 10 plus 12 is 22. Now, here's what's shocking. A kid might do a hundred addition problems to solve that one problem. It takes an average adult three or four minutes to solve that problem. Okay, you practice, you get addicted like most people do. Maybe you get down to a minute or two. So I've done 5,000 of these to develop this puzzle. So here I'm thinking, so if you click on world, all time, everything we do gives you rankings across the world. It's like a Facebook game, okay? So you see your time against everybody in the country. Look at the record. 17 seconds. That's me. Now, <laughs> I'm sitting there, so what ended up happening, see I set the record at 23. If you notice down here, it says Greg 23.6 at 7. So my kid who's in college, every time I present, I'm like, look, I'm number one. He would have jumped on the night before and beaten me. So then he got 22.7, so I had to stay up the next night. I got it 22.2. .2. Then he jumped on, he got 21. .5. It alternates. Finally, he got it to 20.2. It took me three hours one night to set the record. Now, again, I'm thinking I'm smart. So then I bring this puzzle to an inner city Title I school in Baltimore last April. Random school who's doing an iPad project. Two fifth grade classes get to spend 20 minutes a day on iPads. They can do any math app they want. They, Kakuma became the number one app. I'd have kids, I'd walk down the hall, they'd be like, Mr. Tang, I do it too much. <laughs> it was like a bunch of addicts, okay? So the principal is addicted. So all of a sudden I'm getting these emails, oh, the record for our school is 39 seconds. Next week it's 24 seconds. Next week it's 19 seconds. I'm starting to get worried. I am a math expert. I'm at 17 and I got these kids doing 19 seconds. You know what the record is now? This shocked me. I'm not so smart, I guess. Eight seconds. They have three kids under 12 seconds now. Now, I went to the school a week ago. I asked, what happened to James? Okay, he set the record at eight seconds. He's moved on. Mother is a heroin addict. They're worried this kid will end up in jail. He's too smart. But the point is this, these kids got addicted to a math game. Now, if we develop games online that are actually fun, 
This puzzle is so annoying, it's addicting. Okay, you'll go around and you'll get one and you can't find the answer and you swear there's something wrong and the answer's right there. So what we're doing is developing a whole new way of teaching math. It comes down to this. A, does a kid have the right strategies? Do they know how to break numbers apart? If they do, do they apply that strategy across all operations, across all kinds of problems, or are they memorizing just, I can do this problem, I can do this? No, you've got to be able to solve all of them. Then the second thing is if a kid knows the strategy, what do you have to get them to do? Practice. This idea that you don't need to practice a lot, think of anybody you know that's good in anything, sports, music, schoolwork, what do they do a lot of? Practice. Okay, now, can you get a kid to practice if they don't like it? No, so what do you have to do? You gotta make it fun. So I'm not about making math relevant to kids. I don't think it's relevant, right, until a kid's about how old? Senior year and they're trying to go to college? Then they care that it's relevant. Up until that point, what do kids like? Fun, gotta make it fun. Okay, so, is there a better way to do, think about math? Is there a way, better way to think about teaching? I think there is. Am I setting out to make kids great in math? No. I'm trying to make them smart. If a kid's good in math, should they be good in other subjects? Absolutely. If a kid's a good athlete, can they pick up another sport quickly? Yeah, if they can play an instrument, can they pick up another one? Yeah, you know why? Things generalize. So if you think hard, what am I great at? anything you're really good at, doesn't matter what it is, you know what you're good at, you probably understand a few concepts really well and you apply them over and over again. Okay, that's what maybe the, the key is to being smart. So, I leave you with a poem. I try to make, to write poems that are kind of funny, kids think they're clever, for my books. Okay, let's talk about vegetables. Okay, a squash. What's funny about a squash? It can squash you. What's funny about a beet? It can beat you. What does an onion do? It makes you cry. Okay, so here's a poem. A squash will squash you on the ground, and beets will beat you up and down. But onions poke you in the eye, they're the ones that make you cry. What's the name of the poem? No. <laughs> Most people, kids, would say, oh, vegetables. You know what the, the, you know what the title is? Vegetables. Okay, now, if you think that's funny, you have a sense of humor. Now, what is it that makes you think, ah, oh, that was funny? Isn't it some connection that kind of came out of nowhere? Bullies, vegetables, that's what we think is funny. What analogies do smart people like? Weird ones, right? The weirder, the better. It's a connection that you didn't see that you go, oh, that's a great analogy. Maybe it's not about teaching kids to think specifically about math or about anything. Maybe it's about teaching kids to make connections and generalize. Thank you very much. Thank you.